Gli UFO esistono, di solito sono rotondi e hanno un diametro tra 1 e 4 metri. Lo sostiene un pool di scienziati della NASA che ha studiato oltre 800 casi. Il corrispondente Claudio Pagliara. Una sfera metallica ripresa nei cieli del Medio Oriente lo scorso anno da un drone. A mostrare il video al pubblico è Sean Kirkpatrick del Dipartimento della Difesa. È un esempio tipico di ciò che viene osservato. Sono oggetti che compiono manovre interessanti. Questo dimostra di avere capacità tecniche enigmatiche. A lungo è stato considerato un tabù. Ora non più. Le fonti ufficiali confermano. Gli UFO esistono, anche se si preferisce chiamarli WAP, acronimo di Fenomeni Anomali Non Identificati, per evitare confusioni. Non siamo in presenza di una invasione di extraterrestri. Ma per quanti sforzi siano stati fatti, diversi oggetti e fenomeni avvistati nei nostri cieli sfuggono ad una spiegazione razionale. Ieri, prima conferenza pubblica del gruppo della NASA, 18 scienziati, incaricato lo scorso anno di far luce sugli UFO. Qualche successo è stato ottenuto. Questi pallini allineati, ad esempio, sono aerei in fase di atterraggio. Erano stati considerati oggetti non identificati perché il sensore del drone che li ha ripresi non aveva rivelato correttamente a che distanza fossero. La conferenza si è tenuta dopo che lo scorso anno funzionari del Pentagono avevano fornito al congresso video di oggetti volanti non identificati. Gli esperti della NASA stanno studiando 800 casi, solo una piccola percentuale, non ha spiegazioni, rivelate alcune caratteristiche ricorrenti. Gli UFO tendono ad essere rotondi, misurano da 1 a 4 metri, sono bianchi o color argento e volano a quote comprese tra 3.000 e 9.000 metri. Fatto sconcertante, non hanno sistemi di propulsione visibili. During a meeting at NASA's headquarters yesterday, a retired astronaut who works for NASA or who had worked for NASA for 20 years made a statement that might disappoint some. Quote, there was never any formal or informal discussions at all about UAPs or UFOs or anyone reporting anything that would suggest something from beyond our planet. The Atlantic reported that, and this came after the public asked NASA during the meeting, what is NASA hiding? And where are you hiding it? How much has been shared publicly? Has NASA ever cut the live NASA TV feed away from something? Has NASA released all UAP evidence that has ever received? What are the science overlords hiding? According to the Atlantic, NASA has learned that talking about UFOs can be a nasty business. Here's what NASA cosmologist David Spurgle had to say about life beyond Earth. We haven't found life beyond Earth yet, right? I mean, that's be clear about this. We haven't found it yet, but we're looking. In a new piece, Frank B. Baer, junior professor of science at Harvard University, Dr. Avi Loeb, makes the case that we must be aware of what's going on around us. Here to weigh in is Dr. Loeb himself. Dr. Loeb, thank you so much for joining us on Rising. Thanks for having me. So what's the skinny on this recent NASA, uh, NASA explanation or from this former NASA worker? Do we feel like NASA is hiding anything about UFOs or are they being as forthcoming as they possibly can be in uh, regards to how uh, sensitive this UFO situation is? Well, the NASA study uh, focused on unclassified data and Frankly, if there is any interesting data, it must be classified. And there is another organization, ERO, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office that was established by Congress under the Department of Defense. And it has access to the classified data, which should be uh, more intriguing. Uh, but, you know, the sky is not classified. And if there is anything unusual out there, we better uh build new observatories that study the sky systematically the way astronomers do rather than rely on anecdotal reports that by chance happen to see something they didn't expect so my point is rather than obsess with the past where we have blurry images uh, eyewitness testimonies data that we cannot access because it's classified Let's just look at the sky and figure out if there is anything unusual. And that's the approach that I'm taking with the Galileo project at Harvard University. We have an, a functioning observatory that is monitoring the sky 24 seven with infrared, optical, radio and audio sensors. And we are planning to make copies of this observatory. Already we have donors that approached me over the past week to make five copies of this observatory. 
This makes me think of just how important it is to democratize, democratize information that's of public interest. I would say this is absolutely information of public interest and there's consequences to having so much of this data classified. Would you rather the data that NASA has be available to be used by all scientists? Is there a process for getting access to that data as a researcher? We will make the data open to the public and other scientists. Whatever we collect will be transparent, available. The analysis will be following the scientific method. We have full control over our instruments. We calibrate them. So everything will be open. Um, the government is not an open organization. It's not a scientific organization. They are focused primarily on national security matters. And it makes sense for them to hide data because they don't want to expose the capabilities of the sensors being used to adversaries. So for national security purposes, obviously we want to know if there are any spy balloons. And as you know, a few months ago, um, four such objects were shut down by the US government. As far as I'm concerned, as a scientist, I'm not interested in any human made object. So if the government shoots down balloons, uh, that's good news because it reduces the clutter in the sky and the noise from human made objects. I want to figure out if there is anything extraterrestrial. And uh, in fact, I was driven to this subject by the discovery of the first objects from outside the solar system over the past decade. The first one was discovered in 2014. It was a meteor that exploded over the Pacific Ocean. And next month, I'm going on an expedition to retrieve the relics from this meteor to figure out if it was a spacecraft or a rock. Uh, it was tougher than all the other meteors that we ever observed uh, from the solar system. And then there was another object called Oumuamua, which looked really weird. It was flat, pushed away from the sun without any cometary tail. It was not a comet. We don't know what it was. So that intrigues me. And I think we should be open minded to the possibility that there are probes near Earth that could have arrived to us and were sent billions of years ago from other civilizations that preceded us. Dr. Loeb, I find myself very befuddled by the idea that our government um, and our national security intelligence community spotted this Chinese spy balloon while it was still over the Pacific Ocean before it had entered U.S. airspace. But they also admit that there have been craft flying above the continental U.S. that they don't know what it is. Is that something that they're just telling us so that we kind of don't investigate further, or do they really not know? I mean, I find that concept quite scary. Well, in 2022, the director of national intelligence delivered a report to Congress and said that roughly half of the unidentified anomalous objects uh, are probably balloons, which makes sense. Uh, and then there are some objects, uh, maybe a few percent of the objects that are unidentified, which are unclear. And I actually sat at the Washington National Cathedral next to Avril Haines, the director of national intelligence uh, a year and a half ago. And I asked her, uh, what, do, what is your gut feeling? Because she has a bachelor's degree in physics from the University of Chicago. So she speaks my language as a physicist. And I asked her, what do you make of this thing? What is your gut feeling for the small portion of the objects that are not identified? And she said, I don't know. So I believe her. Uh, I believe the government uh, doesn't really know because the data is not good enough. Uh, and because the government is not a scientific organization. And I think it's the duty of scientists to figure out the nature of these objects. And, you know, we should be agnostic if they are human made or natural, so be it. But if they're extraterrestrial, it would change the future of humanity. Do you think that because there's the national security element to a lot of what your work pertains to, right? If you were to find something that was of interest, that could be evidence of extraterrestrials, is there a world where the, the government steps in because it is an, a national security threat? Does that complicate your work? Not at all, because if any probe came from far away, they don't care about national borders. It's not a national security matter. It's information that should be shared with all humans. That's the nature of science. Science is about knowledge that should be shared by all humans. 
it's not the privy of the U.S. president, the President Biden, to be the first to know about the existence of a smarter kid on our cosmic block. It should be information that we share with everyone, just like the fact that most of the ordinary matter in the universe is hydrogen. You know, that is not information of national security importance. And I see it as scientific knowledge. And of course, it will change our perspective about our place in the universe, our aspirations for space. Uh, it will uh, make us less arrogant because as of now, a lot of people believe that we are privileged, that we are the smartest who ever lived by the way, the fact that we are developing a GPT-5 now that may be smarter than humans implies that soon enough we will not be the smartest even on Earth. Is there a, a difficulty in finding funding for this kind of research given the perception from many that this is conspiratorial in nature? It's not conspiratorial. I, I, I'm emphasizing the fact that it's a scientific right project and in fact i wrote a paper uh, i wrote a book called extraterrestrial that was published in january 2021 and soon afterwards uh, i didn't do any fundraising i received millions of dollars that uh, established the foundation for the galileo project that i described and as of now uh, for the expedition that i will be le leading to the pacific ocean to look at the remnants of the first interstellar meteor you know, I just said we need funding for this expedition. It's one and a half million dollars. And a few months later, I had a Zoom call with a donor out of the blue that came forward and said, here is the money. So um, I think people are inspired by the vision. Two thirds of Americans believe in extraterrestrial intelligence. That's more than the fraction that believe in God. So you look around and you see churches funded by a lot of religious people. So, you know, uh, I think this is a scientific mission that could receive a lot of funding and we don't need to beg for that. I'm not doing any fundraising. People just come forward and offer me the funds to conduct this scientific research. The problem is in the past, scientists were shying away from it. So there wasn't an opportunity for those people to support such research. So, Dr. Loeb, you gained some notoriety for your work with the discovery of uh, Umamua, if I'm saying that correctly. This yes. was an object spotted in Hawaii a few years ago. Uh, the scientific community was pretty closed off uh, to your work on this matter. Has the community opened up at all and embraced your work or become more open to the exploration of aliens generally? Well, um, two years ago, I established the Galileo Project and a couple of days ago, NASA had a public meeting in which they basically reiterated the principles of the Galileo project, which is to collect data scientifically. That's in a way um, a very significant uh, uh, declaration, public declaration by NASA that what we are doing is, is uh, something they embrace. Uh, and, you know, Oscar Wilde said that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And I'm very pleased of that. But at the same time, of course, there is a lot of pushback. And for example, in, with respect to Oumuamua, this object that looked anomalous, that exhibited a push away from the sun without any evaporation, no rocket effect, um, uh, that I suggested is being pushed by reflection of sunlight. Even a month ago, there was still six years after the discovery, there was a paper in Nature magazine, which is a very prestigious journal, trying to explain it. And I showed that they made a mistake in the calculation. Um, and so um, people keep trying to explain it as a natural object. And uh, that shows that at least uh, some astronomers are really keen on shoving it under the rug and saying nothing new. Let's move on. Everything in the sky is rocks. And to me, that reminds me of the approach of a cave dweller that finds a cell phone and would argue, you know, the cell phone is just a shiny rock. The hope is, of course, that the cave dweller has kids and the kids would say, wait a minute, let me look at this and would press a button and realize that it's not a rock. So I'm trying to be that kid. Dr. Avi Loeb, thank you so much for helping us to break down these latest developments in the case of extraterrestrials. We will be right back with more Rising.